Hello YouTube. I want to talk again about that mysterious moonlet of Mars, Phobos. Phobos is the largest moon of Mars. And by itself, it is a very interesting space object. Please see my previous videos in the playlist uh, Mysterious Martian Moonlet, Phobos, you'll find it. I have stated what I know and what I have gathered from my continuous research from 1990 and my discussions with Marina Popovich and Professor Burdakov, among others. To be brief, I believe Phobos to be an artificial celestial object that does not care for terrestrial visitors. Now I am presenting information that was published by a brilliant young Russian scientist, graduate of the Military Space Academy and participant in the space exploration programs, including space stations. I have quoted him before and will continue to do so. The satellite has an irregular shape and it looks more like a potato than a classical celestial body. Its size is 27 by 22 by 18 kilometers. By all outward signs, it is an asteroid captured by Mars. However, there is a hypothesis that it was formed perhaps like its brother Deimos. This happened as a result of the collision of some celestial body with Mars immediately shortly after the birth of the red planet. As a result of such an impact, other satellites may have appeared, satellites that have already disappeared by now. In fact, Phobos itself will disappear in about 40 million years. This will happen due to tidal forces forcing the satellite to approach Mars all the time. But besides its origin and its end, Phobos has many other mysteries. And one of them is the difference in the color of its surface. Although at first glance Phobos looks like an ordinary gray colored rock, in fact it is very dark. It's that just in the available images its brightness is increased to facilitate understanding of the contrast characteristics of its surface. And when exaggerating the color differences, we clearly see areas where reddish tones or hues predominate. Although in other places they are bluish, this difference was first discovered by the Soviet space probe Phobos II in 1988, and since then it has been confirmed by other missions, MGS, um, MRO, and Mars Express. But until now, no one knows exactly the reason for such a difference in color. One thing is clear, two types of areas are divided among themselves. And it seems that the red and the blue materials come from the same place. Most theories assume that the blue material is the source material of Phobos and that due to the erosive action of the interplanetary environment, it gradually becomes reddish. Well, let's assume so, but how to explain such a spread of materials that we see today? A very interesting hypothesis has recently appeared on this topic. It suggests that the mystery of the multicolored Phobos can be explained by the result of the movement of sand on its surface. But we know that there is no wind or water on Phobos. Yes, therefore it is not so easy to explain the movement of the regolith on, its, on the small satellite of Mars. Regolith is a blanket of unconsolidated loose heterogeneous superficial deposits covering solid rock. It includes dust, broken rocks and other related materials and is present on Earth the Moon, Mars, and some asteroids, and uh, other terrestrial planets and, well, planets and moons in our solar system, let's put it that way. One of the possible explanations is slopes, or rather a change in their slopes due to orbital librations. This is the very phenomenon that allows us to see more than half of the Moon's surface from our planet. Small eccentricity of the orbit of Phobos 
can cause changes of up to two degrees in the slope of the slopes of the satellite for seven hours and 40 minutes. That is how long the period of its orbit around Mars lasts. It seems like it's a little bit, but in fact, this is quite enough to make very small particles on the surface of Phobos move slowly. This hypothesis is consistent with the assumption that the blue material is the source material, and the reddish one appeared under the influence of the solar wind and cosmic rays. In addition, um, modeling of Phobos variable slopes predicts that the largest change in the local vertical occurs in the Stickney crater. This is the largest crater on Phobos and it is located at a point opposite to the direction of Mars. Phobos, like our moon, always shows the red planet in the same hemisphere. Stickney crater has the steepest slopes in this small world, and its areas with the greatest variety of slopes are painted blue. The red material that literally pours from these slopes into other areas exposes the colder blue material. Until now it was believed that a very small amount of the eccentricity um, of the orbit of Phobos could not play any significant role in the dynamics of its surface. However, it is obvious that this factor has been greatly underestimated. The movement of the material will have an effect, of course not immediately, and on the scale of thousands of millions of years. Scientists understand that there are no catastrophic avalanches consisting of regolith on Phobos. However, earlier researchers assumed that major events were also possible. In fact, it was one of the first proposed mechanisms uh, to explain the color differences on Phobos and the morphology of the walls of Stick Stickney Crater. However, this hypothesis does not agree with the measured slopes and the assumed frictional properties of the Phobos surface. Of course, an important limitation in calculating the slopes and their variations is our poor knowledge of the relief of this satellite of Mars. This transfer of material over the surface of Phobos indicates an important differences between small satellites orbiting other planets and other smaller bodies, comets and asteroids. This data is very important when planning a mission to deliver Phobos samples to Earth. In 2025, the Japanese Space Agency plans to launch the MMX probe Mars Moon Exploration Mission. The purpose of the mission is to deliver to Earth samples of the regolith of the Martian satellite from a depth of up to 10 centimeters. Obviously, the collection of bluish materials source is not the same as the collection of reddish materials modified by interplanetary medium or environment. And the choice of the sample variant is crucial for solving the riddle of the Phobos formation. After all, this is a really strange satellite with ever-changing slopes having slow quicksand. And uh, from my research, you will see it when you look at the videos. Um, I stick to my opinion, of course, uh, with greatest respect to the young scientist. And um, the opinions of those who have studied it up close. And you, there is something going on. Uh, you can ask Buzz Aldrin on a few other scientists and uh, former astronauts. Um, he spoke out, some other people did. To me, my fellow countryman, Professor Burdakov, and of course, the great Marina Popovich, they passed away, but they shared their knowledge. And I shared it uh, with the world in my books and my videos. I thank you for your attention to my work. If you can support me, you will find the links in the description to this video and I'll bring you more interesting information about our planet, our neighbors and the solar system.